Growing up with a sleepwalker in the family gets old pretty fast at first. Everyone is a bit concerned that they'll hurt themselves or wander out of the house. Those fears aren't unwarranted. The sleepwalker isn't aware of their actions, and everyone else is usually, well, asleep. We only discovered my little brother was an apparent sleepwalker when we kept waking up to all the doors and windows open in the morning. Since we live in a rural area, this wasn't too much of a danger beyond potential wild animals roaming in the house. Still, as the older sibling, my parents designated me as the official keeper of my brother's actions. We shared a room, you see, and they wanted to use that to my advantage when it came to retrieving and sending my brother back to bed. The common saying of, don't wake a sleepwalker, isn't as big of a deal as you think. As long as you wake them gently, and they're aware of their condition, they're not going to hurt themselves or be startled. Why would they be? They've just woken up after all. First we tried bells on the door, when that failed to wake me up. My parents tried leaving plastic sheets on the floor. We tried just about everything you could possibly think of to try and alert me when he got up. And that was when my father came up with the idea of a string. Every night, my brother and I would tie a long string to our wrists and go to sleep like that. If he got up at any point, the tugging of him exiting the room woke me up pretty quickly. It was a harmless, noiseless, and flawless plan that had me bringing my brother to bed long before he opened our home to the elements and the animals outside. You get used to it. The string. The tugging. Retrieving the sleepwalker and putting them back to bed. Some nights, he would get up more than once. And others, he wouldn't sleepwalk at all. Either way, that was the only variance in an otherwise rigid routine we had. There was no spooky words out of his mouth during his sleep, no strange places he kept going back to, and no motive behind opening the doors and windows. When asked, my brother simply stated that his dream was unrelated, and he didn't know why he would open the home. This went on for the better part of a year, before finally dying down. We gradually stopped tying the strings to our arms before sleep, because my brother stopped getting up. One night in late July. I remember going to bed a bit earlier than usual, after we took a trip down to the river for the day. Naturally, I was exhausted from the afternoon of paddling against the current, and running around the nearby park with other kids my age. At some point during the night, I woke up. Having become a very light sleeper, thanks to my duty as watchful eye over my brother in the last year. I remember feeling hot and sticky, thanks to the humid weather, getting up and opening the window, flipping the fan on, and hoping that some air circulation might help. But when I turned to go back to bed, I saw my door was cracked open, about two inches wide. As my eyes adjusted in the darkness, I realized there was something else as well. A face. Just beyond the threshold of the door, a small, pale face was pressed up to the crack, one big brown eye staring at me lazily. My fear turned to frustration in an instant when I realized I was looking at my brother, who was standing completely still outside the door, and more than likely, sleepwalking again. With a deep breath, I gathered myself and grabbed the door handle. Go back to bed. Jesus Christ, can't you just be normal for one night? And then I slammed the door shut and returned to bed. It was mean, but I was getting tired of it, you know. After a long day, I just wanted to sleep. And if he was just going to stand out there all night, then it wasn't my problem. The next morning was nothing special. Mom made breakfast as we sat down at the table. I noticed my brother wasn't up yet. That was weird. He was always an early riser and eager to greet the day. I'm guessing Joe is sleeping in today? I asked, idly picking up and stabbing at my waffles. My dad sat down for his coffee and looked up from his paper. 
His brow crinkled in confusion. Joe went to stay at Andy's house last night, he said. Then slowly, his face softened again and he chuckled. You went to bed early, so you wouldn't know. My stomach flipped and my throat felt tight. When did he go? Uh, shortly after you went to bed. I didn't tell my parents what I saw. Worried that maybe something was now wrong with me. Instead, when my little brother came home later that day, I elected to reinstate the string system just as a precaution. Joe seemed confused, but was compliant, joking about how we're tied together forever. It was a strange comfort in a way. The string was reliable, predictable. And that it was. For the next few months, Joe and I slept soundly with few sleepwalking incidents. I was thinking about dismissing the string again, but decided that just one more night wouldn't hurt either of us just to make sure he wasn't getting up and wandering off. And it had become a source of a handful of inside jokes for us. Sibling bonding time. That kind of stuff. I think we both almost slept better when it was on us as well. I woke up to a harsh tug on my arm quite suddenly. It was pitch black, besides my alarm clock nearby, which read the time at 2.25am. This wasn't the usual time Joe got up if he did sleepwalk, but variations could happen, and with a sigh, I began to throw my covers off and slide out of bed. That was when the second hard yank on the string nearly sent me tumbling to the floor, and I found my anger welling up pretty quickly. I thought he must have gotten the stupid string caught on something and was trying to pry himself loose. So I collected myself and hurried towards the door that was already open. And that was when I noticed something was wrong. The string was only long enough to keep us maybe five feet apart at the most. But the string was longer and pulled taut down the hallway and around the corner. Jill? I called quietly. This didn't feel right at all, but I made my way down the hall and turned the corner just in time for a third tug on the string. It was leading into the kitchen, which featured a door to the basement that was now wide open as well, and the string was descending into it, and the tugging beyond it was growing more intense, impatient. This wasn't like Joe at all. He'd never gone in the basement before let alone manually pull on the string. Joe? Are you awake? This isn't funny. I was louder this time, inching towards the open door as the string began to frantically vibrate and yank, and as if urging me further. The closer I got, the more excited it grew. And when I reached the doorway, the next tug was so harsh that I almost lost my balance again. There was a lull in the tugging when I heard a door opening behind me. The bathroom across the hall from my room. A bleary-eyed Joe stepped out and blinked, one hand rubbing his eye as he yawned. There was no string on his wrist. Suddenly, the string began to pull with the force stronger than ever before, making me stagger onto the first step leading into the basement with a yell. Joe seemed to realize that I had the string on my wrist, and he didn't and that whomever, or whatever was in the basement was not him. There was a roar of noise, a low moaning from the darkness of the basement, and my little brother's frantic footfalls behind me, as he ran his way over and grabbed my free arm to hold me while he scrambled for something to cut the string. I heard the kitchen drawers crashing open as he searched, and then he produced a knife, one shaky hand sawing at the string as the noise in the basement became so loud it seemed to reverberate through our bones. And then the tugging stopped. The string snapped away, and both Joe and I fell backwards on our asses, sprawling over the kitchen floor. The noise ceased when the string was cut, and the basement door wobbled violently before slamming shut in our faces. Going to sleep after that was impossible, so Joe and I huddled up on my bed and sat with every possible light on in our room until the sun rose and our parents got up. Naturally, 
they didn't believe us, saying they hadn't heard a thing and slept soundly. They said that we must have hallucinated together, or both been sleepwalking again. Either way, I know that whatever was in the basement was not my brother. And I refused to tie the string to my wrist ever again. Please leave your message 